Hey guys, so we talked about this in class yesterday, and this was going to be a simple little animation you guys were going to do. Um, it was about, uh, well, at least the animation part of it was going to be about your timing, getting a sense of, you know, you pull back, and then you hit, and then pull back, and then you hit, and then maybe coming up from underneath and rotating this and getting that sort of a uppercut, you know, a couple of really good bounces. Um, we talked about you doing it from different angles, so maybe you even, you know, group the thing to itself. Uh, swing it around to that side, going over here, and then just bang, 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 and you're doing something like that. Uh, you're going around the other side, and, you know, you come over here now, and, you know, bang, 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 that sort of thing. All right? So, uh, as far as animating, though, what this was pretty straightforward. We could either just animate this itself and move it around, put it on a path. We could do that. Um, uh, the other part was animating the actual bag, and I showed you where the controls were for that. <laughs> We actually, and that's why I have my outliner open over here, you actually have the bag, and there is a bend handle on it. Okay, we can get to the bend handle from the inputs over here, it's right there. And this is what you're looking to change, which is the curvature. Okay, uh, one of the things we talked about though was, in its default state like this, the curvature really only moves in one axis. If we want this axis to change, let's say, the punch was coming from this direction, well, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever, okay? So what we might do is say something like that and grab the bend handle itself uh, and it's rotate, right? And then bring that around to the angle that makes sense. So now when we did this, so if you brought this to this angle, right? And then we grab that bend handle and grab the bend and the curvature and then you boom, 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 and you can move it like that which is totally workable, and uh, people have done it that way before and can do it that way. But what I suggested was that um, you might want to uh, put all your controls in a single place. And um, we're not going to go deep into it. As a matter of fact, this is going to be kind of a monkey see, monkey do version of that. But at least the beginnings of you guys understanding how to set up some custom controls. And there's different ways to do it. We could tie the distance of this glove to this object um, and do that, but that may not make sense. That kind of limits us because we might say that, all right, when the glove gets this close, if the, if the bag is upright, bend it in that direction. But then as soon as we pull back, um, this is gonna go back and that may not be what we want. We may want it to go boing and then back and forth and back and forth. But you could set it up with what are called set-driven keys. You probably heard the term. They're used um, all the time when you're setting up rigs or animated um, objects where one thing has to control something else. There's also the ability to use something called, let's say, the connection editor, where we can dig down into the connection editor. In this case, uh, this is it. Like I said, we're not going to use this method today, but it's perfectly valid. Um, and then we can go down in there, and if we had set up a custom attribute, it would show up on this side. And then we could grab this object and load it into this channel. And if we had any attributes or custom attributes, um, they would load up on this side, okay? Um, connection Editor has you know, been around forever. It's uh, it's very useful. I'm not, not poo-pooing it, but um, uh, there are new and better ways to go about it. So what I'm going to show you is uh, a kind of handy way to do this. So let's just set this back to zero. Let me grab the handle and put the handle back to zero. Alrighty. So now this is all as it was. <coughs> First thing we're going to need is, and in my case, we could put this on a, uh, a UI or a little GUI thing in the viewport, and I'm not going to bother doing that because a lot of time you're going to be animating the fist anyway, so it's going to be selected. So my thought was that the controls for bending um, this should be on the fist, okay? So what we're going to do is add a couple of custom attributes here, probably under visibility, that are going to control the bend and the rotation of the bend for the um, punching bag. Okay, so briefly, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go up to the Modify panel with the glove selected, all right? And we're going to select Add Attribute. So we've got the ability to add an attribute right here, okay? And we can name it whatever we want. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to have two. I'm going to say Bag Bend. <laughs> so that's a name. It is keyable, so that's fine. Uh, the type is going to be a float. You've got different types, integers, booleans. Um, boolean would be um, like visibility. Visibility is on or off. It's one or zero. Okay, so if this was going to be on or off type of a value, 
Is it visible? Is it renderable? Um, does it cast shadows? That's Boolean, okay? An integer would be a whole numbers only. A vector would be a vector force or direction. A string would be a string of letters, something like that. Uh, in our case, a float, which is a float value, which has a whole number and a dot component or could have a dot component. So it might be 6.0, 6.120, something like that. All right, so float works great. Um, scalar, we're gonna leave it as a scalar attribute type. Um, you can limit the values. In our case, we're not gonna bother, but supposing I only wanted this to bend uh, from 40 to minus 40, well, we can actually push those values right in there and do that and then set a default. So the default with no bend might be zero Minimum might be minus 40, maximum might be positive 40. And then that would be the range that we'd get. In this case, it's going to be infinite because uh, I didn't no need to make it anything less, but you kind of feel like. Uh, so all we need to do is add. And if you look over here, it says bad bend, value of zero. Zero is going to be the default. The next one's going to be uh, bag rotate. Okay, so here we go. And we got bag rotate, it's keyable, it's a float, scalar, I'm not going to put any limit on it. And we hit add. And that's it for the add attribute. Now we could actually go under, where is it? I think it's under here. We can actually add an attribute from here as well. So if we wanted to, we'd get the exact same thing. It's just a different way of getting to it. Okay. So now the glove has two attributes. One's for bending the bag, and we can move that to see the value changes. It doesn't do anything because we haven't told it to do anything. And the same for rotate. Okay. So we can select the glove and basically just give it the values to control of anything in the scene. In this case, like I said, th these two aren't hierarchically linked or anything. It doesn't make any difference. The values that you want to animate on one object don't have to have anything physically in common with the object in which they control. Same as if we set up some sort of like um, a GUI panel like you see often for your, when you're animating a face. Um, it doesn't have any actual bearing on the face or the rig or the model. It just looks at values, you tell it what object it is and what range you want to change those values, and it just does it. Um, like I said, there's different ways you can do this. This could be done in the connection editor. It could be done in the, um, the set-driven key for we can set up set-driven keys. We'll play with this when we get into rigging a little bit more. This is very powerful stuff. Uh, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use um, something that was new as of uh, 2013 with Maya, and it's a much more visual and much cleaner way to get at things. If you go to the Windows menu, uh, you have a thing called Node Editor. So we open this up and uh, it'll probably open up empty unless you have something selected. In my case, I had something selected. So that's why the glove was already in there. All right. But in this case, let's say we did nothing in there and opened up. It was completely empty. So I'm going to grab my glove and I'm just going to say uh, right here in here where it says plus, we can add selected node. And there you go. So now I've got um, these guys, and I'll just put them over here, okay? Um, there's all sorts of stuff under here, and you can change the uh, amount this way and see what's under there. You can actually click levels with this little dude and see what's under there. Uh, another really easy way to do it is uh, the hotkeys, and the hotkeys inside of the node editor uh, are reused ones that are outside, the one, two, three, and four buttons. So one is just that, two, opens up any active connections that you've made. So if you've made connections, they'd be visible. Three gives you the most common connections that you'd probably make, okay? And four gives you everything that you could possibly ever want to connect, which is mildly insane. So we don't want that. So I'm just gonna actually uh, go back to two for a second and actually down to three. So now down to three, basically over here, what we have is exactly what you would expect. You've got translates in here. Okay, you've got some scale, rotate, visibility. This is some of the stuff that you'd find inside of like the object color, it's any parenting, selection handles, any of that kind of stuff. But at the bottom, what you see is you see our two custom attributes, which are bend and rotate, okay? Which is cool, because that's exactly what we want. So now what I want to do is I want to select what I want to bend and what I want to rotate. And although this is the object that is going to bend and rotate, it's not actually the object we're going to be bending or rotating. If you look over here in the outliner, there is that bend handle. It's a separate doohickey altogether, okay? Which is why whenever you set up bends or any of that kind of animation uh, and you're going to move the object, you have to parent it to the object you're bending or the bend gets completely screwed up, 
okay? So I have my bend handle selected, and um, I'm just going to add that, and here it is. So now I got my bend handle in here. So let me just move this up, click this off, and move this. And I'm going to, again, hit two, three, and what do I want in here? Probably maybe it's under here. Let me take this and hit this to one, go here, go two, three, and there they are. Um, which is the bend handle shape node, okay, which is, as you see it right here, bend handle shape node. So this is actually inside of the shape node, which if we go to the attribute editor, you see it right here, and here's the shape node, and here's our bend, right? So what we want to do, obviously, is connect from the glove, the bend, to curvature, because curvature is how we bend this thing. So if we bend this, right, 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 we want that to happen. Okay, all we need to do, if you think of it this way, is inputs on the left, outputs on the right. So we want the bend to control curvature. And it gives you a little unit conversion because there probably is a different value. Um, this could be a, an oil or no, a number or it could be a, uh, an integer number. It could be any variable. I'm not 100% sure why. But it needed a unit conversion node or at least supplied a unit conversion node. Okay, so if you're doing centimeters to meters or... Um, integers to floats or something of that vein, what it does is it automatically provides a node that makes the math work. Okay, so now we have the big bend node hooked up into the curvature node. And if we go to the glove now, and we go to its channel editor, and we go to big bend, there you go. Now we have a single node right there on the glove that will control our bend. Next, what we need is I want to connect the rotate. So let me just go around here, move this off to the side, and grab the handle. And I'm going to tap 3. 3 is the actual handle, which is the name of the object, and that's where my transforms are going to exist. What I want to do is I want to control the right, the uh, Y rotation, which is the vertical rotation of the handle itself with this bag rotate. So what I'm going to do is grab this and pipe that right into the Y rotate. And again, it provides a unit conversion, which, like I said, um, it converts in math. It happens all the time, like if you're doing something in Unity and you're driving something with integers and the um, the option or the feature is looking for a um, a float number and it says, ah, this is an error. And then all you really need to do is convert the integer into a float and then supply the float to the new value and then you're good to go. So that's all it's really doing. Back on Earth, though, uh, we're good here, so we can either leave this open or not. We have bend. So we can bend from there, and then if we go to rotate, we have the ability to rotate. All right, so now we don't have to select this thing at all. And this is all hooked up and it's ready to go. So as far as animating now, all we have to do is select our fist, and we can say, ah, I'm gonna move it to over here. And I might say, all right, let me take the bend back to zero, or take the bend you know, there's move, select bend, move it this way. Um, if the fist moves in a different location or rotates or something like that, let's say we're doing some sort of, um, you know, like a punt, come at it like a roundhouse hook or something like that, um, then all we need to do is go into the uh, rotate category and we can move that like that so we can actually boom, 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 or something of that vein. So you can completely figure out what you want to do. Um, the next step, which you could do, I'm not going to do it now because I would like you to try things on your own, is like I said, if you decided that you wanted to group this object to itself so that you had a rotation that you could just rotate around it, hit and punch from that angle, you could do that. How would you do that? Think about that. So let's say I control G'd and I grouped this object to itself. So now if you look over here, it actually has a group. There's the glove is underneath and you actually have a group. All right, actually I have two groups. Maybe I had already grouped it to itself, so whatever. Um, but now this gives me the ability to punch from a different angle, all right? Which is great, uh, but at this stage, I have to come down here and then when I've got this selected, hit the up arrow and then select this. So we're back to, I gotta go click something else. So I leave you with this question. If you liked that type of a setup and you had already been making custom attributes on the glove, could you or would you or how would you create a rotation for the parent group node of this and create another custom attribute? Huh. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, guys.